Hello and welcome to Ferris Sports Update. I'm your host, Rob Bentley, and thanks for tuning in. On today's show, we'll update you on Ferris State softball, along with Bulldog track and field, and we'll check in with the GLIAC champion Ferris State men's tennis team. We'll start first, though, with Bulldog softball, and joined by head coach Kristen James. And Coach, welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Obviously a big week this past week. Uh, you had six games, four of them at home, and uh, a nice weekend for, for your team as you really um, made a, a nice move towards uh, getting into the conference tournament. Yeah, um, we had two wins, two big wins at home. Uh, we were on a little bit of a stall, and the girls did a great job uh, coming back on our own home field and getting two big wins for us. How nice was it to play back at home after a, a long stretch there on the road? You know, it's always wonderful to come back home. It's what we're most familiar with. Uh, we have a little bit of a unique field, um, and the girls, you know, I think really excel when we're here. Certainly. Uh, this past weekend, uh, starting off on uh, Friday, uh, Good Friday, and you took on Saginaw Valley State, and always a, always a tough matchup against the Cardinals. Uh, it is. They are always a good hitting team, um, and so you expect them to put the ball in play. You expect them to score some runs, and um, offensively, we were right there with them both ball games. Let's go to some of the highlights of that game. I got off to a, a good start and uh, put some runs on the board early uh, before they were able to rally back. You know, we did. Uh, the girls came out hot. They knew right away that their pitchers were going to come right at them. Um, and I think they capitalized really well on good pitches in the strike zone. How oh, both teams maybe uh, changed and adjusted uh, since the early matchup uh, you had against them earlier in the year? No, it seems like it's been a long time since we played that first doubleheader. And uh, offensively, you know, I think we've become even better defensively, uh, getting things in the groove and, and you know, pitching, we're, we're in at every ball game. Obviously the first game, a uh, tough game. Uh, they came back, won at 12-11, but uh, your kids rallied back uh, in the second game and got a big win, 14-12. to uh, Maybe just talk about that second game and, and what you did well. They seem to be relentless, and uh, when somebody pushes them down, the girls do a really good job at, at bouncing back. We win uh, quite a few second games of our doubleheaders this year, and, and that's exactly what they did. Uh, they knew that that second game was extremely winnable, um, and they came out firing on all three cylinders, and they, they did a really good job getting that, that win. Kind of a, a crazy day, 49 runs, 65 hits uh, between the two teams over the over the course of the doubleheader. Yeah, you know, it was uh, definitely an offensive day for sure. Uh, we do, as I said, have a unique ballpark and as big as it is, um, and lots of doubles and triples hit, and uh, that usually is really good for run production. What's it like uh, playing at home maybe as compared to on the road where maybe you have some more fans at home there to cheer you on? Uh, we do. We've had amazing crowds all year, even when it's been a little bit colder. Um, the stands seem to be always full. Uh, lots of people out and around the fences, and uh, that's just that's something that you can't uh, you can't replicate when you're on the road. So it's a great feeling to have that at home. Came back uh, after that uh, performance against Saginaw Valley State on uh, the following day uh, on Saturday, and you took on Wayne State, a team that was in the national rankings here earlier in the year. They were, and uh, you know the girls didn't miss a beat with their bats. Um, came out and scored quite a few runs. Um, on Wayne in that very first game, um, defense was was on point, and you know we, we had a really good win. Really, uh, both of these doubleheaders speak maybe to the competition in the GLIAC, where uh, you've got to be ready to play each and every game. Uh, you do, uh, and so many of our doubleheaders, not just ours, but to opponents during the year as well, lots and lots of splits. So anybody is uh, is able to beat anybody on any given day. Obviously, uh, the weather this past weekend, uh, expecting rain, but uh, fortunately ended up with uh, two pretty nice games for two pretty nice days for games. Yeah, it was absolutely beautiful. I don't know if we got any days like that last season. Um, so I think that that really helps with the team morale, um, getting out, getting on your field, playing in beautiful weather. You know, it's a perfect day for softball. Against Wayne State on Saturday, again, got off to a, a great start, got a 7-2 to two win in the opening game of that doubleheader. Yeah, and like I said, the girls were ready to go. Um, they pretty much they had enough time to get some sleep overnight um, and came back prepared and and performed well on all three sides of the game. Maybe talk about the, the pitching performance you got uh, in game one uh, from Caitlin Nugent. Yeah, you know, she's a freshman um, and still, you know, early in her career. And, you know, I only expect uh, wonderful things from her as, as she grows. Really uh, kind of a common theme here. Wayne State comes back, gets a, a big win in game two, and uh, they were able to bounce back after a, after a tough loss in that opener. They were, but, uh, you know, like I said, everybody's been splitting like crazy. Um, and so today we have an opportunity again to get out and play, um, and I think the girls will bounce back really well. If you're a student athlete, uh, you've got to like maybe this stretch here where you get a chance to get on the field uh, a lot here uh, each and every day. You do, and our, sp our spring season is long, but it's really short at the same time. Uh, the GLIAC season's compacted, um, and so we had a long stretch of, of road games, and so being able to get back out on the dirt here and being able to have practices at home to prepare us for the tournament coming up, 
um, I think will be a huge benefit for us. You mentioned an early week game uh, here against Ashland, a doubleheader that's uh, being made up here early in the week, but then at Grand Valley State on Thursday and back at home for Senior Day on, on Saturday against Northwood. Yeah, three, uh, three more really important doubleheaders, and uh, we've got fantastic seniors. Those girls have done so much for the program in their four years here, and uh, we're excited to celebrate that on Saturday. Maybe uh, talk about uh, Grand Valley State Northwood this weekend, uh, two teams that uh, you've seen once before as well, and then what it will take to, to hopefully get some wins. Yeah, well, when we play uh, Grand Valley on Thursday, we'll be ready to go. The girls performed extremely well um, the first game that we played them last time, and um, I think having good first games, even if you lose them, coming back with the second doubleheader, that confidence is there. Um, Northwood, we split last time, and uh, the girls I know are hungry for that sweep here at home. Obviously, Senior Day uh, final home games, uh, always a, a memorable occasion. What will that mean maybe to your senior class uh, to, to go out with a win? I think it'll be huge. Like I said, the girls have been instrumental in this program. Um, all three of them are starters, and they have put in so much time um, to, to continue to build this program and, and make it a good season, and uh, we are going to miss them very much. How important are these, these final six games? You've kind of solidified a spot in the conference tournament, but uh, obviously uh, still very important in terms of the seeding going into the postseason play. Right. We're a game, two games out from a couple teams in front of us, um, so we have the ability to jump a couple spots in the standings uh, before we head to the conference tournament, and uh, that can be a huge morale booster for your team knowing that you had a really good stretch at the end of the season going into you know that long weekend that the Gliac tournament can be. Going to the conference tournament last year, how much confidence does that give you maybe uh, in terms of familiarity, knowing uh, what to expect uh, next week? Yeah, you know, we're going to be at uh, Sports Force Park at Cedar Point, and that's an uh, artificial surface. And uh, it was definitely different uh, for all of the teams last year. Um, and so going back on that surface again, the girls know what to expect. Um, and I think that is a huge advantage, you know, being familiar with what we're going to be doing. Obviously a team that overall uh, very young this season. Uh, maybe talk about the, the progress you've made uh, since that early stretch in February uh, to the yeah. spring trip and now where you're at here in the, this point of the conference season. You know, we have more wins now uh, than what we did at this point last year. Um, and it was still six games to go in the GLIAC tournament. Um, we've seen a lot of production from our younger players and our, our newer players seeing the field. Um, and that is only just wonderful uh, for, for the future. Uh, I think they have all done a, a really good job at maturing um, and seeing the different levels of play, uh, knowing you know who we have to be stronger against and who you know maybe not as strong each day. And, and they're they're doing fantastic. We're ex extremely excited for the future. Finishing up the regular season, then into the conference tournament. Obviously, uh, the GLIAC has been very competitive all all year long, as we as we've noted here with some of these splits and certainly anybody's game going into the conference tournament. You know, it is uh, the first two seeds right now have separated themselves by a few games, uh, but with the splits that have gone on all year, uh, a one can beat an eight seed uh, and and everything else, and it's going to be really interesting to see how things pan out by the end. Well, Coach, thanks for being with us uh, here, and uh, best of luck on the final week of the regular season. Thanks. We'll be back with more Ferris Sports Update right after this.